Thanks again for a, for a short, uh, intense uh, download on <laughs> AI. Yeah, okay, are you ready? Um, so I've been working on a, on a novel recently, and I've been learning about things like foreshadowing. So that's what we're going to do here. It's just a little teaser. And if I can get the slides up here. There we go. Ah, um, a little teaser about what's going to happen at lunch, a panel about AI and health. And I guess I'm tasked with all these big, new, giant, sort of profound moments uh, that our technology is offering us. But we're going to talk about the hopes and the fears and the reality of yet another very powerful technology that's coming up. And I'm going to rifle through a kind of few items here uh, to kind of get your mind working. Uh, we'll then have some other content here, and then we'll come back and talk about this on the panel. So it's something you can kind of put in the back of your mind and mull over a little bit. Um, so I, my organization, Arc Fusion, has been working for the last several months on a report with IDEO, the design firm, on artificial intelligence and health. And we've been holding uh, dinners and meetings and workshops and things all over the place, and some of you have even participated in that. Um, so this comes a little bit from that, and it's interesting as a journalist to really do this deep dive into more of a research side of this. And then I'm working on a, a few stories, but um, to me, Artificial intelligence, and by the way, I don't really like that term. I don't think anybody does. Uh, it's advanced analytics, uh, machine learning, et cetera, uh, whatever all of that means. Um, I think this is the glue that's going to hold together some of what we're talking about anyway here, especially the mass of data. We haven't talked a lot about that at the meeting. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we will later. But um, we're, we're churning out all of this data. And what do we do with it? How do we make sense of it? And I want to emphasize, though, that what I've learned is we're in the real baby phase, not even the infant phase yet, in health. Um, we've done this in a lot of other tech, you know, in a lot of other industries, but and it's been in certain niches for a long time. But you know, the, the experts here, even the people designing some of the systems, tell me um, that we haven't really influenced healthcare in any kind of profound way. I think we know. I mean, I even know people are going backward. Uh, we had an interesting discussion last night at dinner about Epic and electronic medical records. And it's gotten so complicated, I think somebody mentioned earlier, that I know doctors that fill out and spend all the time on the computer checking the boxes, and then they go back and write their note card again. And there are even some nurses stations now that are back to having paper records. So anyway, uh, so it's not all working exactly as we would like. But this is an enormous opportunity and also a responsibility <laughs> to future generations of how we design this. And I'm out in Silicon Valley. I'm dealing a lot with the people actually writing these programs. And even who writes them is so important here because this will affect so much of our lives you know, as, we, as we work through, especially uh, in, in the you know, near future here. Um, We've learned in this study that um, there are a lot of people that have been test driving these technologies, literally, like in driverless cars, um, but learning how to use this. And I think it's sort of a, a you know, again, a maybe foreshadowing or prelude to what we're going to do with it in healthcare, which is obviously the largest enterprise, possibly even larger than government or about to be um, on the planet. So, and we need, we need something to organize all that. So, to give you a, a, a you know, hint of how early this is, only about 18% of funding right now in, in startups uh, has gone to AI deals, but it's, it's rising a lot. It's, it's almost 10 times higher than it was five years ago. And then you have this pile on with all the big boys, Google, Facebook, and they still, I, I don't think, get it yet. They're still trying to understand healthcare, but they're in there. This is the universe right now of companies, and it, I put this up partly just to show you all the different spaces that uh, at least entrepreneurs are trying to enter, you know, mental health, uh, lifestyle management, all the health IT apps, all of that, and, you know, at least claiming to use AI. I mean, AI, I think it's, been, you know, the word buzz and hype has been mentioned many times here. It's always interesting how you get a new technology, I think I mentioned this on my panel, um, Nobody will, you know, nobody thinks it's going to work, it's not real, my editors say, too early for a story, and then suddenly it becomes this huge, you know, raging um, buzz, and we're kind of there with, with AI right now. So in the study, we talk about the need to create a new kind of virtual brain, much like we use with mobile technologies. Mobile technology, this virtual brain uh, that, you know, connects us with the world, took decades to build, thousands of companies, on and on and on. And we need to do that same kind of um, construction 
on building this brain. And this little chart here just shows you uh, the direct human interface. What we, what we might get on, say, a smartphone is only a tiny part of what the rest of the brain needs to be. And this is not built yet. And whoever builds it is going to have a, you know, probably the biggest company on the planet, or maybe there'll be several. Um, these are the kind of things in the study that we, we put together, some tools to help people uh, deal with things like hopes and fears around AI, which we'll talk about in the panel. Uh, this is a, a patient journey, uh, kind of integrating all of the different factors. And especially on the right-hand side there, the human filter is very important that we keep this focused on hum being humans. And then finally, some questions for you all to think about. You know, what is AI? Is it real? Um, do we want to augment or replace? Um, you know, you think about your doctor. Do you, do you want a robotic, robot AI doctor or nurse or psychiatrist? I mean, these are being talked about, uh, sometimes even being developed. Uh, can AI heal a dysfunctional healthcare system? And then the fears, hopes, and myths. Sort of Terminator versus her, if you know those two movies. Her was a little bit more benign than Terminator. And then, of course, the human-centered aspect of it. And then just to end here with a quote from my friend Atul Bu, who actually is integrating uh, some AI systems at UCSF. There are plenty of people who have AI and health platforms right now, but they're struggling to figure out what the question is. So thank you very much. Thank you, David.